On this episode of China Uncensored, does this corruption make me look fat? Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. You know, the Chinese Communist Party is a little like Smaug. Sure, it seems big and scary, but then it starts to show off. My teeth are swords. My claws are spears. My wings are a hurricane. And reveals its greatest weakness. Hmm, does this mean I'm Bilbo? No, I'm pretty sure I'm someone else. Anyway, it's a common problem. The big scary bad guy has a glaring weakness. In the Communist Party's case, it's corruption. In 2012, then Chinese leader Hu Jintao passed the torch to Xi Jinping. But before he retired, Hu warned that failing to defeat corruption could prove fatal to the party and even cause the collapse of the party and the fall of the state. And so Xi Jinping has made rooting out corruption kind of his thing. Since Xi's anti-corruption campaign began in 2013, he's taken down more than one million officials. That's according to official statistics just released by the Central Commission on Disciplinary Inspection, the government organ in charge of Xi's anti-corruption campaign and headed by China's most woeful man, Wang Xishan. But why stop at a million? Wang and Xi are just getting started. The Central Commission on Disciplinary Inspection also partnered with party mouthpiece CCTV to make this, a reality show starring some of the biggest officials taken out. It's called The Real Corrupt Officials of Beijing. What's that, Shelley? Oh, it's called Always on the Road. Weird. Fortunately, my favorite state-run media, Global Times, explains the unusual title. The anti-corruption campaign is always on the road and will never turn back. Ah, of course, how silly of me for not immediately getting it. The show's featured confessions include Bo Xilai and Zhou Yang Kong, two of Xi Jinping's biggest rivals. Also giving a totally uncoerced confession is Zhou Bunshun, who confessed to the heinous crime of giving his dead pet turtle Buddhist burial rites. Communist Party officials are supposed to be atheists, you see. Let's hope he never met fellow confessionaire Zhang Jianjin. He's a former party secretary for a pharmaceutical company who was often treated to extravagant meals, including a three-foot-long crocodile tail. Because anyone can have common food like a foot-long hot dog. Just go to the Yulin Dog Meat Festival. Anyway, there's one thing all of these fallen officials have in common. They acted on their own, and there's absolutely, definitely, for sure Z's, no systemic problem within the Communist Party that led to this rampant corruption. The wrong lies with me, says Li Chun Cheng. How did a provincial party secretary, nurtured by the party for so many years, change into this? Said Bai Pei. He was sentenced to death for taking bribes of nearly 38 million. So are all officials featured in Always on the Road corrupt? No, of course not. One official featured prominently is described as Spartan, humble, and happy with a simple diet. Xi Jinping. Simple diet? I guess he does eat a lot of vegetables. According to the New York Times, in many areas, party members have been ordered to watch the show. I mean, it would be corrupt not to force people to watch it. Now, on the one hand, showing that Xi Jinping is tough on corruption makes him and the party seem powerful. But on the other hand, people might start to wonder, hey, they've already punished a million corrupt officials and they're still going at it. Is there maybe a bigger problem with the Communist Party? The correct answer is no. All of these officials act completely on their own, and there is absolutely no culture created by the Communist Party that condones corruption. Nonetheless, according to this recent poll by the Pew Center, roughly half the Chinese public says corrupt officials are a very big problem in the country, while another 34% believe they are a moderately big issue. All this comes at a crucial time for the Communist Party, because this week it held its annual plenum. The sixth plenum, to be exact. What's a plenum? Well, it's when China's top communist leaders come together, don their ceremonial robes, and seal themselves behind the vaulted doors to discuss party policy, economic strategy, 
and once again, try to awaken the slumbering cosmic horror Cthulhu. Just kidding about that last one. That's actually scheduled for next year's plenum. Each plenum has a different theme. According to party mouthpiece Xinhua, this year the plenum will focus on the norms of political life within the party under the new situation, and a revision to an inter-party supervision regulation. Which I think is the party speak equivalent of Xi Jinping saying, I'm watching you, don't cross me. Yes, if anything has become clear in the opaque dealings of the party, it's that Xi has been consolidating power by purging political opponents in his so-called anti-corruption campaign. Uh, we observe that 77% uh, of local party secretaries, governors have been rotated, uh, the military have been fully restructured, uh, suggesting that uh, uh, President Xi is fully in power. And Funny enough, many of those provincial party leaders have recently been referring to Xi as the core leader. Two-thirds of them, in fact, according to Reuters. And the Communist Party just announced that Xi is now officially the core leader of the party. That means Xi ranks right up there with Mao Zedong and Deng Xiaoping. In other words, it means he's made big headway. We'll talk more about this in a later episode. But Xi's position is still uncertain. Many of the 300 Central Committee members that make up the 6th plenum were appointed by former Chinese leader and retired Mario villain Jiang Zemin, Xi's biggest political opponent. And Xi Jinping has another problem. The head of his anti-corruption campaign, Wang Xisheng, is 68 years old. Theoretically, 68 is the mandatory retirement age, which means that he's supposed to retire at next year's party congress. And who'd be willing to replace this guy? Xi Jinping will also be expected to name his own successor for when he steps down in 2022. But that's only if he follows precedent. And let's just say, Xi is kind of an unprecedented guy. So what do you think? Is Xi's anti-corruption campaign saving the Communist Party? Or shooting itself in the foot by exposing its dark underbelly? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Remember, this show relies on support from viewers like you. So if you can, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. Do you like kung fu movies? I sure do. That's why I partnered up with my friend Ben Hedges on his show, Only in Asia, to list our top 10 favorite kung fu movies. Check it out.